G.K. Chesterton wrote, Art like morality consists of drawing the line somewhere. So on that note, let's draw some lines. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is draw a vertical and horizontal line approximately in the center of our drawing area. I don't always do this, but I thought it might help. We're shooting to center our watt scene. There's a rule in art called the rule of thirds, but I don't generally follow that rule, and we're just doing a single character, so centering our subject will be just fine. Draw a circle close to the top right of our bottom left square. I drew a diagonal line to illustrate where the points will be for the eye corners. We're going to draw sort of curvy triangles. Now for the part of the face, which will be blue, just imagine you're drawing an odd shaped C. Now don't draw along with me on this B, as I'll be changing the line here in a second. Do sort of a teardrop shape from the corner of the beak opening. When you draw a line to determine the length of the beak, curve the line a little bit. Then draw two more lines to complete the beak. I forgot to account for the extra feather part at the top of the head, so I'm erasing the line to make the beak larger to meet with the head. This is exactly why I like to pre-sketch on tracing paper. You can correct as much as you want. Draw a curved line where the beak meets the head. Now we will draw a curve for the neck and body. Extend the curve of the body past the head to complete the top of the head and the body, we will draw sort of a loose S shape. Now we will complete the blue facial area. You don't have to blacken out the eye at this point, but I for one just couldn't help myself. Do a little swoop around the bottom of where the neck would end and do a little swoop for the wing. Let's place some markers for where the plumage will shoot out from the head. This will help us draw the plumage more accurately instead of just trying to fully draw it one by one. With the first line for the plumage, we want the line to smoothly continue along the forehead line. Swoop it back and then forward a little. The second line will be slightly higher. The third will be significantly shorter and then we reduce the size as we go along till we're done. All right, so the cock -a duty camera stopped taking footage before I finished it. I did not know this was happening. I think that's a load of poppycock if you don't mind my salty language. I went ahead and filmed it finished to show you how I did it. I'm putting the dashes where our guidelines for the plumage were. I started from the end of each guideline and drew away from the lines as I worked towards the head. Do this on both sides to create a tapering effect. 
Now for the body, put some sharp sawtooth lines coming from the chest. But. And there we have it. Don't transfer your image onto the canvas yet. I want to show you how to do that. In the next episode, we will start transferring the image and lay some flat colors. Email your progress pictures to jasonwrightcommissions at gmail.com and I will post them up. Be sure to tell me your name as well. I also have a Facebook page you can post to. Search Jason Wright Studios on Facebook and give me a like. Every little bit helps. It's always harder to be left behind than to be the one to go, yes. But I'll return, fellow painters. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.